Welcome to the man cave, and the man cave is way too cold at the moment. So this will be a different style of video in that I won't be doing a tech demo, but more some thoughts as to what's going on in the world of InfoSec. And drones, I'm probably going to touch on drones in this video. This month, ring doorbells were under attack. Well, under attack seems to be too strong a word. It seems that a certain hacking forum was hosting events where people would be harassed via their Amazon ring products. So how did the attackers get in? Well, it seems that the users may have picked passwords that they may have used elsewhere or passwords that were easy to guess. But also, Ring had little protection to detect not only compromised accounts, but also password spray attacks and password guessing attacks. Well, who's to blame? It's complicated. Certainly, the users should take this as a lesson in not reusing credentials. But Ring should also hang their heads in shame. It's too easy to lay the blame at the feet of the stupid user, forgetting that most of them are non-IT people. Did Ring deploy technologies to detect too many password attempts? Did they deploy a solution to check for compromised credentials? Certainly, Troy Hunt's Have I Been Porn service is integratable into solutions to check for passwords that are compromised. Where was the risk-based logon checking? i.e. if an account gets compromised from a particular IP block, or if a user suddenly logs in from another country from the one they were just logged in from, force multi-factor authentication, force a password reset. Where was that? Personally, I think that Amazon fell into the trap of believing that this was the user's problem, and that any risk should be borne by the user. Well, this is 2019, almost 2020, and that attitude will not wash anymore. I hope that Amazon and other services take this as a wake-up call, that they need to not only provide these wonderful services, but help users operate them securely. They need to make the secure mode the default mode. They need to help us educate users as to how to protect themselves. Another thing that happened to me this month was whilst I was driving home, I received a call on my mobile from a lady asking me if I'd been involved in a car accident. This is the normal car accident scam, but... Um, this one had been recorded to make it seem as though I was talking to a real human being. Well, I had an idea. I answered that yes, I had been involved in an accident. And this then put me in the information gathering section of their menu system. Then when the voice asked me for the date of my accident and inspired by the XKCD comic about Little Bobby Tables, I answered with a SQL statement. I have no idea if my SQL statement worked, but I can hope. Switching to drones. Yes, my first actual commentary on drones, and this is a good one. Well, a bad one. It depends on your point of view. It's well known that councils seek to ban anything they don't understand or get complaints over. They don't seem to have a graduated response, and the ban hammer is seemingly their only tool. We have seen bans on professional dog walkers, swimming in parks, carrying golf clubs. Hello, Northeast Derbyshire Council. According to Google, that's yours. Radio controlled toys in parks, if you can think of it, a council's banned it. Well, Hillingdon Council in West London has taken the step of using public spaces protection orders to ban all drone use on all public spaces controlled by Hillingdon. And it's not just recreational use. They've also stated that they will not grant permission for any commercial use either. This is madness and it's lazy. Now, I've written to my local councillor and I'm setting up a meeting as Hillingdon Council's approach to ban all drone operations is short-sighted. Note, as the council own much of the land that schools reside on, this ban also applies to all my schools in the area. Good luck when autonomous vehicles get added to the curriculum. The last thing I want to talk about this month is Christmas and what I want in the world. And no, I don't want peace and harmony or even goodwill to all mankind. But I do want patch PCs. So when you go home this Christmas to see families and extended relatives, why not bring an InfoSec Go bag? Remember that Windows 7 goes out of life on the 14th of January 2020. That's just a few short weeks away. Why not prepare to upgrade a laptop, a PC, and save at least one machine getting hacked and a late night support call that you will get anyway? Why not bring what you need with you? 
bring USB keys, spare hard drives. You know you're going to get roped in anyway, so why not escape from the Christmas arguments about Brexit and stop just one PC joining a botnet? Now that's all I've got time for. Have a great, safe Christmas. And remember, fix Auntie Maud's PC before she joins a botnet army.